please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Today is the uh, Mitchell County Board of Supervisors. We're at the Mitchell County Courthouse. It is Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019, and it's 8.30. Uh, we have an agenda before us. Any changes or comments? If none, would anybody like to make a motion? Also move to accept our agenda, as is. Second. So Barb has made a motion. Stanley has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is approve the minutes of the June 25th and 26th meetings. Hopefully you had a chance to read through the previous minutes. I have one of them and so move to accept the minutes also. Second. Barb has made a motion. Stanley has seconded it. Roll call. Barb? Aye. Stanley? Aye. Smolik? Aye. Previous minutes have been approved. County Attorney, general discussion. Do we have anything for Mark? Does Mark have anything for us? I'm happy thing. Quiet. I have nothing. Okay. So. Thank you, Mark. Yep. For your presence. Thank you, Chainley. Yep. Looks like we'll have a hold on the sheriff and we'll have county engineer update. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Engineer Bro. Good morning. Um, I've got a I got a bill for a drainage district bowl that has been tossed around here and we confirmed that it was a repair on DD7. So you can have that. <laughs> Sounds so excited. <laughs> $474.75. Yeah, there's a blowout in the tile. Um, rock run is continuing. Uh, I think we're up in the I think we're up in the south of Tor Torterville area, north northeast of St. Ansgar, so they're running rock there. Um, when we can, when it doesn't rain and the roads can support the trucks. So um, that's going on. Um, this week, you know, obviously is the holiday week, so we'll have today and tomorrow yet, and then the guys are off the rest of the week for the holiday. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing on the agenda is uh, the approval of the project of um, BROS or BROS dash swap dash C zero sixty six parent seventy two dash dash SE dash sixty six the apparent low bidder. Was Rognus Brothers? They're out of Lake Mills. Their bid was two hundred and seventeen thousand five hundred twenty-two dollars and twenty-five cents. Two hundred and seventeen thousand five hundred twenty-two dollars and twenty-five cents. The actual engineer's estimate that submitted was two hundred sixty-nine thousand four hundred twenty-five. So, see about a twenty percent lower cost than estimated. Um, I'd recommend we award the project. To Rogers Brothers of Lake Mills. This again is on uh, 320th Street, just west of Balsam. Okay. It's a bridge yep. that's half half open. We had to restrict traffic to one side. So. 20%. That's pretty substantial. Yeah, it's 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 actually surprising. We were getting some bids. And these are box culverts. These are triple box culverts to take the quantity up. So. It's, it's interesting that we've had some other bids earlier in the season that were substantially higher, but this is a local contractor too, so that might make a difference. The mobilizations, when I looked at the mobilizations are less, so there's some other things that are cheaper, so being local sometimes helps. Okay, well, do we have any other comments or questions about this? If not, 
not, maybe we should take action on this. Uh, so basically we could not use rail cars. This is federal money, we aren't using local money, so okay. we're going to use the, use the money that we can get from them guys. Yep, okay. Yep. So move. Stanley has made a motion to accept this bid from Rodness Brothers. Second. Barb has seconded it. Uh, roll call. Stanley? Aye. Barb? Aye. Smolik? Aye. The motion has been made and, and, and passed so that you may go. So Steve, speak. I will transition it as awarded and then when we get things back we'll have that electronic signature thing to go through again and I think with uh, Casey here we'll be able to do that probably next week. I think the process will be there and then we'll get it. This okay. will probably be the last one we have for a while so we won't have to worry about it. Perfect. I'll so, be expecting that. Yep. And then uh, the last thing I have, I've got some quotes, a quote for uh, we, every year we're doing some joint patching or crack patching on our asphalt roads. And every year I get a quote higher than I can afford, but I pick and choose what I can afford. So I'm looking at some stuff. The winter was pretty tough. So we paved Zinnia last year and there's uh, some, a lot of transverse cracking that was thermal cracking. Um, some of it might be reflective from longitudinal, but... Um, we're looking at probably around, well, it's $49,262.59 for that stretch of road up there to seal it. And then I'm going to go and do uh, 325th Street from Foothill East to the Hickory, and that's about $8,992.50. The other, everything combined was going to be substantially higher than what we could afford, so I'm skipping on uh, S70 and T26 this year, which were the... Uh, which is the North Springs Blacktop and the Red Road. Um, okay, what was the first road you, you the mentioned? The first road is Zinnia, the county line. <clears throat> but the second one was Foothill and what? It's between Foothill and it's uh, 370th Street. or 300. 25th, I thought you said. That ain't right. Is it 325th? <coughs> oh, um, that's the... That's the one down there. Uh, is that the... Rock Creek. Rock Creek. Okay. Thank you. Unless we've got it wrong. It's the Rock Creek. Well, let's see. He said, yeah, Foothill. Okay. So, was between, just between 325th and Foothill and West. Right. He said Foothill and T26. Well, Foothill going west Hill. from T20. From T20. To 330. Gotcha. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. We'll be doing those two roads. All righty. <coughs> That'll probably suck up the seal budget for the year, and then we'll have some, hopefully later in the year, we'll have some more patching going on. We had gotten some patching done in New Haven with Wix construction. They did what they could. They had a window of opportunity to do some, so they did some, but there's plenty more to correct to do. Yeah, I mean, there's I had a complaint this weekend on the spot out there. And I probably out on pressed the... It. I pressed it. Passed it on to uh, Merlin. So. Is that, which, was that about it being the, the landfill road then? Correct. Yeah, there's plenty out there. And that's on their list to do, so they're filling it in with their, when they get paid out on other jobs. Mm -hmm. so. All righty. We'll get those patched, and then we'll pick our way through the other roads. And in the meantime, we're getting, uh, getting some information for sawing some relief joints. Don't have a lot of that information yet. Okay. Well, does anybody have anything else for Rich? Well, is he going to make the request for the wheat commissioner? Well, I did he submit a request? He, yeah, he did. Had, he, he emailed me. He here. did. Okay. He wanted permission to go to the annual roadside conference. I think it's in September. Oh, I expected him to be here. No, he didn't say he wasn't going to be. Probably out spraying. Okay. Those are normally good conferences, and uh, they can the only thing I would say is that uh, I would like him to come afterwards and then give a report on... on I agree, yeah. So we can verbally just say he can go with his own... No, we we'll, make take... the, we'll make the motion. All righty, let's do that. I'll right also now. move. Okay, this is, Second. For, this is for our weed commissioner to attend the roadside conference, and Barb has made with, it. With the understanding that he's coming... That he will visit with us and give us with a, the understanding a that he will come to a meeting and give us an update. 
Anyways, Barb has made a motion. Stanley has seconded it. Roll call, Barb. Aye. Stanley. Aye. Smallick, aye. So it is passed. Yeah. Those are usually very informational. Mm. Correct. So Austin is able to go. Rich, you will let him know. I'll let him know. Yep. Okay. Is that, do we have anything else for the county engineer? You guys are all cold patchy today, too, trying to straighten up a lot of stuff before the holiday weekend. So. I met some of them on the road. Yep. We have so. a couple crews out. You've done a good job up at Carpenter. Thank you. Rich. Yes, sir. Could you have Austin do a favor for me? Mm -hmm. Could he have it spray that section? T38. <coughs> okay. Yep. Is it weeds or is it? Just trees or what's it's it? weeds. Okay. It's, what are the, I call them itch weed. I don't know what they are. They get to be about eight feet tall and the ragweed leaves on them. It must be the ragweed. Yeah. But it's kind of an eyesore when you're coming into everything else is mowed and sprayed. Should, and uh, it's just that one section. See if you could kill everything off and plant some uh, wildflowers or something. They can grow tall too. I would think eventually you'd get. You know, the seed would die well, in there. Sooner or later, you think it would. I'll mention it to him, yeah. I'm sure he just he's forgot about it. Sure well, he's, he's been it. out. I know that he went out spraying and then he got poured on. Yeah. Who knows how much of that will be affected. Okay. Well, Rich, I thank you. Have a great holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. You too. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Means I, we don't have the sheriff here yet. Number seven is consideration of construction permit application for Kettle One Farms. Uh, master matrix scoring and board recommendation and time for public comments. So that's what's next. We have the construction permit application form here. I did a little glossing through it. Uh, we do have a representative here, I believe, from Iowa Select. Your name is? Daryl Hunt. Daryl Hunt. And Daryl, of course, I, I, again, I, I did a little looking through here and uh, Everything is passed according to specs in the, the DNR's eyes. Uh, do you have any comments? Anything you would like to bring up? Not, I mean, we, we feel the matrix got good points on it. Everything passed. Uh, I think we've shared with the board some of the things we're doing above and beyond the matrix, as far as uh, the utilization of trees and electrostatic fence. I think that information was shared with you guys, wasn't it? Yes. If not, I've got brochures here for you if you'd like them. That's a couple of things that we're doing above and beyond. Help reduce odor. Okay. Make the sites you know, less offensive, I guess you'd say. Uh, I thank you. Is there any comments from the, from the board? Any other questions? I, I'll wait till everybody's done talking. Well, you have a chance to have something to say before public comment. Um, well, I know Iowa Select was... Um, Penny has um, some concerns that she's going to talk about, and I know Iowa Select, but I don't know if that's allowed at this meeting, was going to answer, try to answer some of her concerns. Um, personally, okay, if I need to bring it up now, it seems kind of early to, until they're done, but personally, um, I realize we cannot, we can't by law change anything as far as the matrix. But I do think that there are a few things that need to be changed that would still be supportive of elk agriculture, but would still um, help satisfy neighbors' complaints. And so I would like to have us write a letter 
to our legislators and to the, the DNR, um, just expressing some, some possible ideas that they could um, change or put onto the matrix. Uh, that, that was just going to be my suggestion. And your comments and suggestions would be similar to the County of Greens? Yes, they have, they have a letter. And um, it, obviously, if, if, if we write it up, we'll all have to approve it. That wouldn't be done today. But. Correct. Stanley, do you have a comment? Not at this time. <clears throat> Actually, I think Barb has given a pretty good comment for which represents a majority of up here of the supervisors. So uh, I'm going to offer this chance for public comment. And Penny, I'm going to give you three minutes. So when you start, and I will allow you to make comment, but the, I will, no questioning. But thank you, Penny. Mm, this is a copy of my comments. I would like to make a few comments regarding the application by Iowa Select to build a new 5,000 head hog confinement operation in Middle County. I asked staff members at Iowa Citizens for Community Improvement to re review the application and they found several objections to the scoring of the master matrix. I have submitted these comments to the auditor and hopefully you have had time to read them. It was their conclusion that 155 points should be taken off, leaving the applicant's master matrix score at 350, a failing score. In summary, on items 8, 12, 17, 19, and 25, Iowa Select has failed to provide even the most minimal information to comply with Iowa law. The information is overly vague, lacking in site-specific substantive details, full of omissions and oversights, and is generally insufficient and or incomplete. Due to lacking information, Iowa Select should not receive 155 points. You have a paper detailing these objections. Hopefully you read it. Um, I want to point out, Supervisors do not have to automatically approve every application that meets the matrix. You can reject it for not scoring enough points. You can reject it for community concerns, and you can reject it for other reasons within the board's consideration. If you have questions regarding the rights of the supervisors, contact Kelly Brook, Acting General Counsel for Legal and Legal Services Bureau Chief over at the DNR. Um, you're not required by law to approve every matrix that meets the points. Um, I would like to point out that the no history of administrative orders in the last five years. In September of 2018, Iowa Select failed to regulate a depopulated facility resulting in an overflow of manure pit. Um, I'd like to provide, uh, I also provided you with an example of an application that was turned down. So you know you can do it and how it's done. I would like to make a few comments on environmental concerns. Um, the DNR has done well testing in Mitchell County. So, uh, here's a summary of results from 2002 to 2017. 926 wells were tested. 281 had elevated nitrate levels. 405 were contaminated with bacteria. 179 had elevated nitrate and bacteria levels. The Iowa Department of Natural Resources recommends testing wells every year. Yet almost two-thirds of wells were tested just once between 2002 and 2017. The true scope of well contamination in Mitchell County and in Iowa is unknown. I provided a copy of an article to you from the Des Moines Register. The title was Nitrates in Drinking Water to Maybe Tied to 300 Cases of Cancer in Iowa Each Year. I've also provided an article in the Des Moines Register. Iowa nitrogen pollution in water is getting worse despite hundreds of millions of dollars in spending study shows. Um, some... A few of the points made in there is that nitrogen pollution flowing out of Iowa to the Gulf of Mexico has grown by close to 50% over nearly two decades, a new report shows, despite hundreds of millions of dollars spent to stem nutrients entering the state's waterways. And I would point out that this uh, corresponds with the explosion of, of CAFOs in Iowa. Penny, Penny, I would like to... I've given you a little more than three minutes. So. Okay, well, I'll just leave you with these two pictures. Here's an Iowa Select confinement on Primrose Avenue. It's a nursery fine swine facility. This is not a family farm. Family farms don't have high security fence around them with high tech locking gates. Okay, thank you, Penny, for your comments. Uh, moving on with the
this. Uh, is there any other public comments? Where is this located at? Where will it be located? Uh, the new Eastern one Avenue. is on Shadow Avenue. It's uh, Jenkins Township. The easier for me to show you on the map would be In my head, it's right here. What is that? But that says Underwood. Yeah. 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 Located on Shadow Avenue, very north. Such a huge shadow. Red answers. He's showing him the mirror on the stage. I guess I had it in my head in a different spot. Oh, it's Shadow Farm Finisher. I excuse yeah. me. I'm. It is on uh, the red X up there on the top section. Yep. Okay. That answer your question. Yeah, really? I just wanted to know. You know what it was on the monitor. It's kind of a dead mile there. comments about this Iowa Citizens for Community Improvement letter. Just, just so the board understands, you can't approve a permit, you can't deny a permit. What you do is you make a recommendation to the DNR that they approve it or the recommendation to the DNR that they deny it. So you're not really approving or denying the permit, you're only making a recommendation. Um, their letter states that Miss Mitchell County is supervisors are at no risk of being sued by Iowa Select for doing their job. I asked for some authority for that, did not receive any. They also said that you can turn the, uh, or not recommend the application for multiple reasons, two of those being for community concerns and for other reasons within the board's consideration. I asked for authority for that. I believe, once again, that's incorrect. That's why the master matrix was created, so you couldn't do those things. You could only look at the master matrix. I asked for authority for those items that they said. I received no authority for those either. So I, I believe, at best, their letter is misleading. At worst, it's simply not true. So those are just my comments, whether you decide to approve the permit or, or not recommend that it be approved or denied, totally up to you. But when they say you have no risk of being sued, that's absolutely not true. You know, I can sue Stan and say he punched me in the nose before the meeting today. I'm probably not going to win, but Stan might spend $10,000 on attorney's fees. You guys might spend several years in court. Now, you probably will win, but that doesn't mean you're not going to be in court for a couple of years if you just act, you know, contrary to what the law is. So, I'm just telling you I've got some real concerns with this letter. If, if somebody wants to provide me with authority for those statements, I'd be happy to listen to them. But right now, I do not think those are valid concerns. You know, you, you cannot recommend denying the pit permit for what they said that you could. You look at the matrix, that's it. That's why I suggested the letter of the recommendation. Right. Auditor Tesh, have you received from the DNR their analysis of the matrix? Yeah, Steve, right here, right there. No, from the DNR. No, I have not received anything from the DNR. Is the DNR scheduled to uh, basically go through that a week from, or this coming Monday, on uh, <clears throat> the 8th, I believe. That I didn't get that notification. I believe that the DNR has not scored it yet. It's, none of us are aware of the DNR being scored it yet. I would recommend that uh, we table this until after the DNR scores it. Stanley is 
made a has made a recommendation, and I think. Yeah, I think that's why. That's probably. And the letter says you have until the twelfth. So. Which is next Friday. Right. So you have another week. So we can have. We so can we can put it on for next, next week to be in our scores at Monday and. Next Tuesday's meeting. So we will put this on hold for the moment. Next Tuesday. Could I just make one comment? I'm not sure on this because we've gone through this before, but I think you have to make either recommend that it be approved or recommend that it be denied before they'll even score it. They, so if you table it today, I don't think they'll take any action on it. So we must have a recommendation to approve or deny. this application? I believe that's correct. Okay. All righty. Do we have any motions to that effect? Oh, I can't. I haven't even seen it. But that's just a, 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 a motion to approve so that they can go on and score it, according to what the county attorney just I would move to approve. I think they only score it if you deny it. Otherwise, they prove it. If you approve it, they don't even look at it. I would move to approve. I don't see what other choice we have. Okay, Stanley has made a motion to approve. By everything we've been told legally. I will second that motion. So, just one comment. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Whether you recommend that it be approved or recommend that it be denied, they're going to score it. So even if you recommend that it be approved, they're going to score it. If it doesn't score the number of points, they're going to deny it. They will sure. not deny a letter. Okay. So just because you recommend approval doesn't mean they're not going to score it. If anybody, if I'm wrong there, somebody correct me. My understanding, they don't score it unless you deny it. Well. Because you've already gone over it, so they don't feel like you have to waste their time. No, Anyways, that's not true. they will score it. We've... Stanley has made a motion. I have seconded it. Uh, roll call. Stanley? Aye. Barb? You've seconded it? Well, I'm going to be, I'm going to, all right, so I'll, Are I'm, you able I'm to gay. second it? Uh, yeah. yeah, I can second it. I can't first. No, you should go in order as the, you should both second. Okay, Stanley has made a motion. He has approved. I've made an approach, a motion to approve. Stanley is yes. I'm yes. Barb? Nay. Okay, it's been approved. Uh, any further discussion on this? If not, we'll move on. We'll go on to approve the tobacco permit. Okay, I've got a tobacco permit for uh, Oboling to incorporate in Mona Tobacco. Uh, they've filled out the permit. They've uh, sent us a check for the permit of $50. So I recommend that it's uh, be approved. It's for uh, running from July 1 of 19 to June 30th of 2020. Supervisors, do you have any motions? So moved. Stanley has made a motion. Second. Barb has seconded it. Roll call. Stanley? Aye. Barb? Aye. Smollett? Aye. Approved. Approved fireworks permits, and that is for Nathan By and the requested date and location July 4th or 5th. It's at Cedar Ridge Property Association. Another one is Jennifer Ham, July 6th. At physical address of 1780 350th Street, Osage. Joe Nickerson. Uh, one is at, he is for Donnie Thorson Farm on 4244 Echo Avenue, and then he's also Joe Nickerson. Oh, let me say the date on that. I did not say the date. July 5th. 
Jeff July, that's July 6th or 5th too. Uh, Kevin and Dolores Coster, and again, this is Joel Nickerson requesting this permit, and that is for August 3rd. So, 4411 Glass Heaven, same answer. So we are approving four permits. They gave the proper information that we need, so I so move that we accept all of them. Second. Barb has made a motion. Stanley has seconded. Roll call, Barb. Aye. Stanley? Aye. Smollett? Aye. Number 10, discuss. Uh, Mr. Chair, can we jump down to number 11 just because we have people in the audience here? And yes. 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 All right. Yep. I'm sorry. <coughs> no, no problem. Uh, consideration of contract with Avance. Tony, you're going to be the, be the spokesperson? You bet. Uh, this is the, the final vote, hopefully, on the program that we've discussed for Avance for the um, human resource development for, for the county, for workforce development. Um, we had a meeting last week in, um, in Mason City with uh, all the other supervisors involved with this consortium. And thus far, we've gotten um, support from um, Winnebago, Worth, and Cerro Gordo. Uh, there's two others that I have not heard, but they were leading towards support from Franklin, I believe. Floyd County has declined um, with their plant closure, and the biggest issue they have there, their biggest employer, has a very highly specialized need for employees, and they did not feel that Avance could fit their need. Uh, so they only had two employers that had expressed interest in the program, and so Floyd County opted not to. Um, we have had probably the opposite. We've had most of our employers in the county are supportive and would like to see this type of program go forward. And we, we finally got down to the basic support was based on population, and that puts um, Metro County at 7,500. Floyd County was going to be bigger. Theirs would be about $11,000 cost. What we had discussed at the last meeting was that with the drop off of Floyd County, we were going to be approaching um, one or two of the counties to the west to possibly include them in the group as well uh, to try to make up the difference. However, if we're not able to secure that, um, we would be countering with Avance with what we are able to raise. So our cost would not change at this point in time. So what we are asking is for support at the $7,500 range um, amount uh, for Mitchell County's participation in the program. Uh, if you would like, and this, we have a couple of employers here that have had some experience with the Avance, so if you have any questions from them, um, I think they'd be happy to give you some answers. Do you care? Yeah. Okay. Before I forget, I'm going to quick read. Um, I just got an email from Ivan Wold because he really wanted to be here. Um, and uh, he can't can't make the meeting, and he wanted to support Jennifer Andrade, Andre's um, proposal for workforce computer. Recruitment. I support this effort and would recommend the supervisors support it for one year and evaluate it after one year. Mitchell County did not benefit. Uh, if they didn't benefit um, after a year, then I'd recommend not renewing for another year. I anticipate if there's anybody against this proposal, they are not um, trying to hire recruit workers. At one time, we could get 10 to 20 applicants for every job opening. Today, we're lucky if we get one and often we don't get any. It is costing Mitchell County for every job opening that's not filled. We all understand the multiplier effect that happens for every payroll dollar paid out to employees. We have job openings and have had not one employee apply for them from the Charles City Chicken Plant. That seems to be an argument people are trying to give, which by the way, I, I know that a lot of those people were bust away from Waterloo, so. And I do not think our employees are the solution for our workers' shortage. Um, and I think Jennifer's model utilization of, local, of a local recruiter in Puerto Rico will make this pro program successful. And uh, anyway, that's, that's his feelings. And I know another argument I've heard too is um, that Belmont was laid off. Well, that <coughs> Belmont's 70 miles away. And even if somebody is desperate and does come for a job here, you can bet as soon as they find a job closer to where they're at, they're going to leave. <laughs> but I have my doubts.
else we're going to get many for that either. Okay. Well, and another thing that was pointed out, <coughs> excuse me, last Wednesday was that uh, uh, other areas of the state has uh, uh, approached Jennifer to actually uh, to try to have her do this in other areas, and she's right now not willing to go to these other areas. She's willing to work with us uh, initially in that, and maybe Tony can expound on that a little bit. She, she has been contacted, and I think she is working with some of the other cities, but because of her ties here, I think she has had uh, a certain amount of uh, good feeling and wants to work here. Uh, and I think it's part, it behooves us to, to be able to capitalize on that, her, her passion for working in this area. And I think part of it is she's had some success. Uh, I know we have a, um, a couple here uh, that she brought here. Um, and knowing her, what short time I have, I know she is now emotionally invested as well. Uh, when she brings people here uh, for them to succeed, uh, she's going to be there for them uh, in the long run. And I think that's where the success comes from. Um, Winnebago had a hard time for, um, uh, committing to it simply because their biggest employer, Winnebago, um, has a contract with another firm that's basically doing the same thing, but on a much bigger scale. Um, they, they have a hard time keeping those employees because they're not, the people there aren't invested. They're just, they're thrown to the wolves and, and they, they're not getting that same support, whereas Jennifer does. Uh, she's, she has, she brings more to the table than just numbers. Uh, she brings a personal commitment. And I think that's something that's missing in the corporate world is that personal commitment. So uh, I, I really would like to hear some of the, the stories from some of the employers to kind of share their experiences and what the things that she's brought to the table are to help you understand <coughs> a lot more of what I'm, what I'm saying as far when it comes to the emotional uh, commitment and what that takes from a personal human standpoint of building that development up. So if you don't mind, I'd like to ask. Yeah, can, can I quick add something sure. before that? Um, I did talk with, uh, I know it was mentioned um, that we really, that might have might have been a problem with Forest City that they didn't help them acclimate right. to the community. And so I did call Katie Henry of the Chamber of Commerce because it was suggested that she would be a good person for doing that. And I made an offer that I would help her with that. And that's where you guys can come in handy, too, to let us know what kind of things um, do help you feel more part of the community. I'm guessing helping find a church, making sure your kids get registered for school, just fun, simple things to do in the area. If you have anything to add, you can tell me later or whenever. But Right. Well, I think that that's the important part is helping to build that community and uh, being willing to ask those questions. Uh, and for and I think for people moving here, I don't care what culture you're coming from, but to come here and actually have people ask, what can we do to help you feel at home? I think that in itself is a big plus uh, that anybody would appreciate. So. Lindsay, you want to yeah. give us a well stand up? And tell us who we are. How <laughs> things are working out? Well, so we, but I've been talking with Jennifer for probably a couple years about trying to find a new pipeline. Just for reference, in the last probably year and a half, people we've hired from Mitchell County were employed by Valent, Mayors, um, a co-op. Uh, we've lost people to other companies in the county. So that's what we're, that's what, that's the other option, is we just steal back and forth. And so we've been trying to find a place to, ideally for anybody, is to bring new people in, new families, um, you know, whatever. So. Since this started uh, with Jennifer, um, our first uh, employee that we got, uh, Ramon, in, when did you start, a couple months ago? Two months ago. Three months ago. And so um, we relocated to, Ray Miller's has relocated one, um, and what, you know, it's, it's great that we're getting quality employees, quality people, but to hear their story is... Oh, good morning, my name is Lisbeth Lamboy, he's my husband from Mundeolio. Um, we come from Puerto Rico. Um, back there, the job opportunities are really low. Um, there are a lot of um, security issues too. 
So we wanted to find a place where we could fit in and where we could find good jobs. Um, we are professionals. I'm a doctor. He's an engineer. And back there, we weren't finding th those things. We plan to have kids in the future, so we wanted a really nice place, a safe place. Um, and that was when we find uh, uh, Jennifer with Avance. So she offered us this opportunity with the relocation package that was really interesting because in Puerto Rico now we are mostly or not having jobs or finding jobs that um, are like with contracts for six months or so. So they're not really secure and we cannot do a lot of plans with those. And people are mostly living check by check. So without that opportunity of relocation, it's really hard to like to take the um, to move. So um, she talked us about that, and we found Mr. Falk. Um, they both uh, have been um, really like family to us. They had show us everything here. They invited us to all places and it has been a really good experience for us. So we feel really happy here. We plan to stay here and we plan to keep on working with Mr. Falk for a lot of time. Okay, thank you for telling yep. us your story. So what is your impression of Mitchell County so far? For us, everything is perfect here. Uh, I'm working with Mr. Falk as maintenance technician and uh, in the produ production crew. Uh, everything has been perfect so far yeah, for us. Is there anything that we have failed to do that you'd like to see us uh, uh, maybe be able to do a little better job or, or any? Not really. We feel really happy here. Um, and we hope that more families can come here so they could be like us. So do you have friends yet in Puerto Rico that uh, would maybe consider? Well, as I said, it's hard because people are living check by check and they like hold up when they know that they have to do the moving process. But if they have a good offer, they will really think about it. If most, if they have kids and, and big families. I think one thing that we've talked about is part of the thing with the county with co-op and the marketing so that you know people know what's out there, what to do, recreational things. Um, and even if they're not in the county, I was just talking them on the way here last week and they went to Clear Lake. Um, you guys didn't really know about that before. So they've been finding stuff on their own. But for anybody looking to relocate here or even people that are here, let's you know, to get the, the marketing piece so we know where the kayak places are where the places to get on the river, places to eat and I mean they've been yeah, all over the Midwest since they've gotten here. We've been visiting Des Moines, um, a lot of places here in Iowa, even Minnesota. And it's like that. We have find all those places and Clear Lake for example was a place that we were like, oh wow, this is so beautiful. Here we can spend a day, even several uh, weekends. We can come here and pass our weekends here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, have, I have some more comments too. You know, we're down to 1.6% for unemployment now. That's, that's not leaving much choice for our employers. And we, we have had a business that added on somewhere else. We have one threatening to leave due to no help. And we have one that could expand today if they had employees. So in order to stabilize a healthy atmosphere in, in your community, we have to work together as a community. Okay. One, one quick comment too though, that you know, to me this is a small investment because there's still a lot of expense you know, for the employer. Um, and I think once she can get going and get um, solidified where she's got, you know, uh, space down there and people there where she can travel time back and forth. I really feel if it works, I don't know that they're going to have to come back to the county. If it, if they do, it's going to make enough sense that we're going to know. But there's still a lot of cost of relocating somebody, so it isn't like 
the total burden is taken off the employers for financially. To me, it's just to get Jennifer where she knows that she's got enough stability to really take the next step because right now we can't really bring any more people over because of the housing thing, which you guys are taking care of as well. So there's a lot of things that have to happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. But this isn't totally taking the cost away from the employers. It's just a piece of it. And no. collaborating with different counties is really important too, I think. Yeah. Is there another employer here? I was there by, but I was under the understanding there was two employers here. Is, is there another employer here with the... Green, with green Millers, but, but they're, they're not here. They're not, they're, their representative is not here, so I was just curious if we had another story to be told here. Did you have a comment back here, Karen? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, and I kind of look at this kind of like the parking south of St. Ansgar on number nine. We put a parking lot up there. I think it took two years before I saw the first car that actually used it. Quite often now. now there's five or six cars that are utilizing it, but it takes a while to get things motivated. You know, you, you just, uh, one month or two months is not enough time to uh, uh, properly give an evaluation. Uh, basically, uh, uh, so what is being asked is $7,500. Yes, sir. I would so move. Stanley has made a motion. We didn't really get any comment in on this. It was, was there any anybody else have any other comments to this whatsoever? Okay, Stanley's made a motion. I second. Barb has seconded. Roll call. Stanley. Aye. Barb. Aye. Smollett, nay. So, but it has been, it is passed. Um, oh, I, just a second. I wanted to add on that it's just for one year. Right, and I think that's everyone's understanding. Uh, that will be revisited in one yes. more year. Can we have a three-minute recess then? Yes, we can. And uh, discuss county care property. Okay. Ouch. Can you hold on a second? Yeah, go ahead. I forgot something. I hope I didn't. <laughs> okay, we're set again. Uh, county care property. We have the building. We, we, we were talking about this last week. Yeah, Richie and I went out, took a look at it last week. I did get a hold of Fuzz Dunley to see about possibly uh, uh, burning the burnables, the roof and whatnot, and he was going to uh, talk to the fire chief, and the fire chief was supposed to uh, uh, get back to him, on, uh, and that hasn't happened yet. But uh, uh, probably would have to clam off the roof what we've got there. I'm pretty sure Rich's boys have got a pretty busy summer here. Well, we were just. What we talked about was whether or not you can burn the roof or have to take it to recycle. I mean, for taking the landfill. I guess that's. I don't know. We're busy, right? I mean, we're, but that's something that we could do in the winter, early or fall, or winter time if we got an open winter. But here again, we'd have to have a couple of trucks not completely outfitted, to, and we do. We'll have a couple of other trucks, but I think the the initial conversation was what do we do with this roof with the shingles on it? So. That's the, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Well. It's up to you guys what you guys want to do with the building. I think the, the thing that the, the, we wouldn't have time to do any demolition this summer. But. No, you've got too much going on right now. No, but if we get it on a schedule and that, then we're going to get something done. I mean, uh, we can, if we, we don't ever things. talk about it, nothing we ever happens. kind of in there somewheres maybe that we can get something accomplished this fall or winter it all depends but i think the biggest issue you guys had are, are what you do with the, the shingles is either landfill them or you can yeah that's it use it as a fire test or whatever i don't know if they can do that or not uh, well in the 
it sounded like the fire department was very interested in using that as a uh, training. training. Oh, good idea. Oh, maybe they would. The only one of the things that they were concerned about is uh, did that count as one of their two buildings uh, per year that they can burn? Uh, although it's in the rural area, and, and uh, I guess that's that's there. So I guess we have to wait to hear back. Well, like I say we're making some progress. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for. Yeah. Yeah, There's a nice key pool in the basement. It's uh, pretty wet. That's full of water. Oh yeah. Well, deep about water. six inches, eight inches. Oh, so you no. go down to the lower level. You go down to the lower level, Stan, you can swim. Well, yeah. 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 The first, <laughs> I mean, first level is about six inches, and then you go down the steps, and there's plenty more. Yeah. There's a, there's a dungeon area down no, there. No, I've been down there. It's, yes. <coughs> Thank you, Rich. Anyways, uh, we will move on to items of note. Meetings attended. Bart, you did get a stack. Okay. Um, we're going to be, uh, as supervisors, having to approve, and I gave you guys a copy to look through. Uh, Home Health just made up their emergency plan. Um, but I noticed they have this map in it, and I was really impressed. I thought we should try to do something here like that. Because if Dave was gone and Chris was gone, this would make it so much easier for anybody to locate all these, uh, like the gas shut off, where the fire extinguishers are, where the electrical shut off is. I mean, it would be great to have something like that that shows in detail. And so I did talk with um, Dave and Chris and Casey and they're going to check into if we can come up with something like this too. Okay. I just wanted to keep you guys informed on that. I know in the, at the road department we had <coughs> specific walk paths, and yes, we did have noted where the fire extinguishers were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I had a substance abuse meeting. We discussed a plan for our articles in the county newspapers. We'll start it in September, <coughs> and, and it will be done once a month. It was decided which order we would talk about substance abuse. Um, and uh, by having um, Prairie Ridge um, Healthcare, the sheriff, and the police departments rank them. We had actually had all these people rank the... Um, top six uh, substance abuses, and um, so our, our articles will be on them with the least and ending up with the strongest, and the strongest, of course, is alcohol. Uh, county Social Services meeting was in New Hampton, and we received um, some guidelines for preventing violence in the workplace, which goes along with our emergency planning and health, home health, so I stopped off copies uh, to both of them. Um, uh, Chris and Laura uh, and Jessa at Home Health. And at the meeting, we went through 16 items on our agenda, most of which required discussion and decisions. Some state updates. Governor Reynolds did finally appropriate $2.1 million to benefit schools as far as um, children's mental health, including suicide prevention. Uh, DHS, the Department of Human Services um, Family First will be restructured or removed. And our budget is on track where it should be uh, because I also had to meet uh, with uh, the Human Services um, group. I was not able to make it to a meeting. I was supposed to go to in Mason City. Um, That was the NIAC one that they were discussing. Um, housing. And let's see, I had an uh, emergency planning meeting with Home Health. I met with Jessa, and she came up with this emergency plan. And that's where I'm talking about the map. And uh, she has many other concerns um, about who's in the building, who's using it for what, if, the, if they're paying any rent, that kind of thing. And so um, I told her when we make 
uh, plans to approve their emergency planning that we also discuss her concerns then and she get right on the agenda. So it'll depend on how long it takes you guys to look through that, the plan. And I think that's it. Okay, I guess, thank you, Barb. I, I guess I understand her concern as to who's in there, but I don't know what her concern would be if what they're Well, paying. their concern is, is um, in order to be HIPAA um, compliant, there's, there's some people have gone into these rooms that they thought that they had for their nurses to use for oh, privacy. They were in the wrong. Yeah, well, yeah. for one thing, yeah. um, uh, um, social services, Bob Lincoln has moved into one of those. And then um, and they were, were wondering, um, they were curious if they were paying rent. And I, I really didn't know the kind of detail that she was asking. And I guess the paying rent part of that, we would think that would and, um, well, I know what you mean, but, but it had me curious. <laughs> but yeah, maybe yeah, they would like to know who's And, and, and if they if they That would she also be know, part of this plan. Yes, they wanted to know who all was um, okay. part of, if, are they actually doing county services if they're in there. Okay, all right. Thank you, Barb. Stanley? The only meeting I had was last Wednesday afternoon, and that was with the various counties uh, discussing... Uh, I wish I could have made it. Uh, it was a good discussion. It lasted about 45 minutes, and, and uh, but a lot of support. They want to, like you say, that uh, uh, they want to be able to have updates, and, and uh, uh, if they feel that uh, things have really progressed after a year, they might want to consider doing something again, but it's just a year, year thing right now, and Let's see how it works. Okay. Thank you, Stan. Uh, I had a uh, emergency management 911 meeting. Uh, it was Thursday, June 27th. It was a special meeting. It was held with the uh, senior board members. Uh, Greg Beaver, uh, the sheriff, he was the chair. Pat Hipsch was there. As the, through the mayors for the county. Uh, Kurt Angel was there. He was with the fire departments. I was there as being supervisor and I'm also vice chair. And the meeting was held to look through the applications and to do interviews for the position of the emergency management person, who, which was at the time currently held by Ray Huftelin. And, uh, there was only one application that was handed in, and that was Chris Olson. He is the current 9-11 coordinator. Uh, he was asked questions by the board and was approved, and he will be brought to the full boards of the emergency management and 9-1-1 tomorrow evening. And, uh, also discussed was the wage package for this position and how it would be implemented implemented by ours emergency management 911 anyways that meeting ended so that was my meetings attended uh, manure management plan updates well, just one happy park incorporated 2340 410th street osage Thank you. Uh, I guess we won't have the Sheriff's Department update today, so we're down to uh, public comments. Is there any public comments? Crystal, have you got something to say? Charlie? Chuck, well, it's not very nice, I guess. With uh, no comments to be made, I guess if everybody's happy, we will call the meeting over.